Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about air quality in PEG-G. So basically, polyethylene terephthalate uh, with glycol added. So PET-G, basically, or a lot of times referred to just as PEG-G, or PETG for those folks out there. All are correct statements. So anyways, one of the things I want to kick this off with, my typical disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, haven't played one on TV, nor will I. Uh, these are only my opinions. There is no endorsement of safety in these. And so again, I'm simply sharing with you my experimentation. So as with um, ABS and hips, which you've seen, uh, I'm going to start ABS and PETG running up here. Now, one of the things I got to say, I was surprised by PETG. Now, I probably shouldn't have been. Uh, PET is a pretty stable long-term plastic, typically known for polyester leisure sh suits. I'll spit that out of the 70s. It even makes me stutter. Uh, and again, the glycol, as I understand it, is added to, to reduce the hazing, which I'm not sure if you add a filament to the hazing unless there's covering so maybe somebody uh, with a bigger chemistry background than mine can hit me up down below and kind of share with the audience the uh, extended reason for adding glycol except for what I've read on the internet anyways uh, and also because of the addition of the glycol I was thinking a little bit uh, that I would see something different than what I saw and I'm just going to jump into it literally I saw you know basically no formaldehydes formed um, you know, very little VOCs uh, formed, and then uh, very little particulate matter all in all formed by the release of this. Now, one of the things that, that I'm going to kind of give you maybe a little bit of a spoiler alert, I, I've sort of come to find that things that like to stick to themselves emit fewer particles than things that don't stick to themselves very well. Um, and and th this is one of the things. I think with ABS, and again, this is a little bit Joe's opinion now, uh, ABS doesn't stick to itself. You, get, you, you, you tend to see a bit of delamination in things with ABS where you don't in other plastics. Um, PEG-G is, is pretty sticky. TPU is pretty sticky. Uh, those type of things. And so, again, the low particulate matter in this was really surprising to me. And again, you can kind of see it running out in the corner for yourselves. And, and I measured this again on the um, uh, Da Vinci 2O. So I ran this through there. So, uh, you know, uh, ABS, HIPS, Petchy, I all ran on the Da Vinci because I typically run my higher end plastics on the Da Vinci's because they're more so equipped for it than most other printers. Um, what you'll see me doing is running out PLA as well as uh, TPU and nylon other, other machines. I'll do PLA on the tarantula and I'll do uh, TPU and nylon on the Wanhao, which I've modified specifically for printing those two filaments. Now, with regards to this, again, it's, it's been a contained system. Now, one of the things I want to clarify, I've, I've gotten several comments for folks saying, well, Joe, that's fantastic. You know, you put the meter in a case, well, of course you're going to see this. Put the meter outside the case and you won't see it. And, and I just kind of have to scratch my head at that one. So, one of the things to understand, and I've been using the analogy sort of like with cigarette smoke. So if you smoke one cigarette in your house, it's highly doubtful your house is going to really smell like cigarettes after one cigarette. But, but to keep in mind that one cigarette smoke doesn't totally disappear. It, 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 it falls, it gets embedded in your you know, furniture, things like that. And that's the same thing with the outcome of 3D printing. So the gas is in that chamber, unless exhaust outside, as I covered in a prior video, um, are going to be released into your house. And one print isn't going to do too much. Two prints are going to do too much. But if you print, especially like I do, hundreds of prints or thousands of prints, it's going to add up over time. So this is the part. What we're seeing in these contained environments is what's being released into your house. This stuff just doesn't magically disappear. And that's the one part I have to really stress uh, is this stuff is eventually going to leave that enclosure and enter the air envelope of your house. So with that, one of the things that I have to say is, is again, I'm overall impressed with PETG, and primarily because of the low particulate release. 
Now I printed this, uh, well actually it wasn't this thing, I'm using this as an example because it's made out of PEG and I printed it on the JG Aurora for something else. Uh, but uh, again, I used the same model for uh, all these tests. It's exactly the same model. And I printed it at 245, just like I did this one on the JG Aurora, but I printed it at 245 on the Da Vinci. And look at the low particulate count that I received uh, printing it. So I'm pretty impressed by PETG. And again, I'm not endorsing this as being safe, you know, because one of the things I've harped on in the prior two videos, uh, you know, this is only looking at formaldehyde in, in VOCs, volatile organic compounds. There could be a whole bunch of other stuff in here. I don't know how the glycol release, you know, since this has glycol in it, how that's going to react and things like that. But again, I focus primarily on the particles, and the particle count is very, very low. And again, this is a one hour print, and I, I'm impressed because this is, uh, you know, when you look at ABS, you look at hips, and then you go to PET G. And I think this has a lot, and again, I'm coming back to Joe's opinion. And if there's, you know, um, somebody out there who's a chemist, got a solid background in this, I'd be happy to hear it. But I really think it has a bit to do as, as it's as where it changes face, you know, uh, it changes face states, if you will, you know, uh, because again, it's glass temperature is where it sort of becomes rubbery. And then once we go above the, the its glass point, you know, is when it becomes sort of molten and extrudes. And I, you know, again, I may, I jumped to the conclusion, I got to say, when I started these tests, that the hotter filaments would be the more dirty filaments. And this is probably one of the hotter filaments. And you can see the, you know, in the overlays that I'm doing, it's not. So, or at least from the perspective of my test. Now, again, I want to reiterate, this is not a super scientific blind test. I have performed several tests. For example, uh, when I printed this, I retested uh, my results that you're seeing here, and they were the same on the JG Aurora. Uh, I've done this a couple different times. All of these have not been a, a you know, the, the summation is of the test, but I have also doubly tested, triply tested in many times, and quadruply tested in some cases, the results are repetitive, and they are. So I've spent a lot of time on these tests, and this is what I'm seeing. So I tell you what, I'm going to give PET G a big thumbs up. Uh, I really like PET G. I don't print with it as much as I should, um, primarily because of the bed temperature. And PLA is kind of easier, and a lot of the stuff I'm doing for this channel are sort of example prints anyway um, that I really don't keep. But I tell you what, if I need something to be resilient, this is where I turn to PET G. So, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up, share this. One of the things I'll be doing is, since I've now got several of these out, I will put the link to the playlist list down below. So if you want to look at each one of them or see as they, they come out, then you'll be able to do that. I've also decided at the end of this that I'm going to do a summary video, sort of summer, summing these all up and then do a, a display across the board so you can watch them all together. So the ones we got coming up, the next one will be PLA, the one after that will be TPU, and then finally nylon or, or I'm going to use bridge nylon or have used bridge nylon. So again, stay tuned. Don't forget to swag shop, subscribe, comment below. Interested to hear what you got to say, and we'll see you guys in the next video. And Pet G, I'm impressed. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.